Cat. It's Max. I'm here this time with a little review of the infamous Williams S52 <laughs> Super Ratchet. Williams, su su excuse me, surprisingly enough, still makes these. I should say they make the S52A, so it's kind of like the old descendant, but it is, it looks similar, but it is redesigned. Of course, the frustration of all old Williams Super Ratchets, both the pair heads and the round heads, is they use these lock rings to hold them together makes it pretty difficult to service. Besides that, it is indeed uh, a pretty famous ratchet, just because it is pretty heavy duty. It does have one feature I've seen with a lot of Williams ratchets. If you look, it's not straight, it's a bit warped. I've seen that. Actually, I have a big three quarter inch Williams pair head and it's like that too, so always been kind of disappointing. Besides that one, that warping where they didn't put it through a straightening process, the grinding, as you can see, is pretty symmetrical. Pretty symmetrical around here. It's a pretty nice looking ratchet. Do like this four post here. If we listen carefully, it's a twin paw, and it appears that on some twin paw designs, they're exactly opposite each other, just to double the strength. And on some designs, they offset one of them so that they can essentially get more teeth than normal i.e. they can have a 40 tooth ratchet with some really uh, chunky thick teeth but since they offset them and one paw is engaging and the other one's engaging it can divide those 40 teeth in half and give you an 80 tooth amount of motion even though you only have 40 teeth so it's kind of a compromise or an interesting way of doing it I will say that the anvil is pretty tight on this so maybe part of their <laughs> threaded collar is doing that but I can t also tell you if you find one of these that are beat up or this top part is rusted or dented in you'll never get that color off it will will not be uh, rebuildable at all nice extension on the ball detent really pretty strong pretty uh heavy duty clanks there really do uh like this ratchet a lot so not a lot else to say about the williams super ratchet besides it is a nice looking ratchet it is indeed pretty heavy duty. Indeed has pretty tight anvil. <laughs> and I do like the coarse knurling. Nice and easy to grip. Really appreciate knurling. If you're working in greasy or oily environments, you'll appreciate knurling too because your hand doesn't want to slip off so easily. And this thing is pretty heavy. Definitely a heavy duty half inch ratchet. And uh, I think the Williams Super Ratchets were actually were better in their round head versions than the pair head versions. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get this apart. What I'm going to do is actually, I was going to use a chisel. The problem is, is these undercuts are just so shallow. You really need to like take a socket and sacrificially grind it to make a special tool. Very difficult to get tools that will fit just in these types of slots because pin spanners don't want to cooperate. What I found is actually a pry bar is the best in this situation because the pry bar allows you to get down in there. Well, we'll demonstrate on this side. It allows you to get really down in that groove so you can actually drive the ring and that angle means that the pry bar is something like this. The biggest issue with trying to single point remove these, I mean using just a single chisel or in this case a pry bar to try to loosen these types of lock rings is the fact that when you use a regular chisel it's straight so the chisel ends up being at a real steep angle and so you're putting a bunch of your force this way rather than actually trying to rotate the ring this way. So a pry bar with the slight hook is really actually pretty good in this situation because that hook allows it to drive in and really get down into that groove and then the bend allows the handle to be a bit more essentially straight so that I'm putting my force more this way in a rotational fashion. Let's go uh, see how well <laughs> that works out for me. Alright here goes nothing, we'll see how well this actually works out for me. Just going to step on the ratchet, just have it against a wood block here to try to protect it a little bit. And hopefully this ring isn't too stuck or I, it won't be going anywhere. It does appear that I'm making, come on now, slow progress, although it is kind of biting in on the ratchet there. 
try it a little more. This is the biggest nightmare of these old Williams is exactly this. It's just a, about impossible to rebuild them. not making a whole lot more progress beyond my initial movement I'm just not getting anywhere there. I'm gonna have to hit it super hard what I'm also finding is if we can get this to focus here well we'll do just do it this way you can just see how it's starting to even flatten out the end of this this is an old craftsman uh, USA pry bar but it's still dinging up the pry bar and I'm not getting, really making any progress all I'm doing I've done is essentially damage the ratchet so anyway that's my little video my little demonstration and I've actually seen these a few times over the years that I've been making uh, YouTube tool videos and I've read online and it's indeed you know pretty true uh, people like these ratchets they are pretty nice and they're pretty heavy duty it's just Williams' decision to use threaded collars with proprietary slotting in them. You can see I really ding that up. The steel's good, hard enough to uh, damage that Craftsman pry bar, the tip of that Craftsman pry bar. But, you know, without the special service tool, you can never even open this up to clean it out or lube it. The only way you can really lube it is just to dump a bunch of oil here and a bunch of oil on top of it or just dip the whole head in oil and let it seep in. And it is pretty smooth and uh, elegant, but gosh, you know, using this ring here with just these tiny little undercuts where they're hard to get access to, uh, just essentially makes this a permanently assembled ratchet. And uh, there's a re <laughs> ratchets do should be taken apart and cleaned. And so there's a reason why nobody else used that I'm aware of ever used threaded collars besides the old Williams Super ratchets. Uh, for their assembly process, there's no other manufacturer. It's the only ra there may be some, but I of all the ratchets I've ever seen, only Williams does this, and it's just so annoying about their old super ratchets. And it helps explain why, like this S52, uh, you know, is like 15 bucks on eBay. Is you know, be, for a half inch, you know, really super ratchet, you think that's a really good price. But the fact of the matter is, you can't ever take them apart. They're essentially permanently installed and uh, I don't have a socket nor do I want to spend all the time that it takes to take a socket and grind it out so it has four little pegs to attempt to disassemble this it was really a very poor design choice on Williams part so anyway sorry for uh, taking so long to uh, talk about this ratchet there's some people who really swear by these just like the old you know Craftsman Eastco RHFT round heads and a few other brands but the Williams ones Really, you know, since you can't ever take them apart, super hurts their potential value for what is otherwise a round head ratchet that has, you know, very little end play and extremely low lateral play for a round head ratchet. Could have been so great if they decided to use a snap ring or something. Just a little bit easier to deal with than a threaded ring that just gets jammed up. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching. And subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Gaddis Maximus out. I should say the revised edition real fast. They did totally revise it. It just has a screw that goes through the switch. So they're, the newer ones are much easier to uh, rebuild. But I don't know if they're quite as good as like these old ones were. Anyway, see you next video.